Time now for Rugby League and a third round match in the John Player Trophy between two very famous Lancashire clubs indeed, Salford from the Second Division and Wigan. Our commentators are Keith Fielding and Ray French. Welcome to a snow-covered Willows Ground, Salford. And I'm sure the conditions will have a big say in whether favourites Wigan will go beyond this. John Player Trophy third round. Heavy overnight falls of snow might have cut the odds, but Wigan coach Alec Murphy has brought in from New Zealand Big Graham West at number 11, another big New Zealander number 10 at Danny Campbell, and Graham Shaw, very experienced prop forward at number 8. And with this sort of size in the pack, they'll be looking to take this second division Salford apart. And number 11, Graham West, signed on a £60,000 five-year contract from New Zealand earlier this season. Already repaid something of three tries in three matches. And Salford side coach Mal Aspie got a very experienced pair of halfbacks. David Moran on loan from Widnes and Stevie Nash, ex-Great Britain test captain. They'll be looking to be prodding and probing for openings. And Mal Aspie number four with Wigan this time last season. He'll be looking forward to put one over his old club. Very experienced player. Campbell again. Oh, and a good ball, well taken by Mick Scott. And he's still going this second row, lad. Well, we usually see this second row for Wigan doing all the graft and all the hard work. He's not one of the running forwards. Mr. Drinkwater, the touch judge. Obviously seen an off-the-ball incident. It's a breakthrough from... Uh from Wigan, from Scott, a lovely breakthrough as the cover comes across and you can see West and Moran having a, a fracas just back. And referee Lindop has his book out, he's already booked Graham West for this off-the-ball incident. So that big, tall New Zealander will have to watch himself. John Pendlebury, that young Wigan number 13, looking for support, it wasn't forthcoming. An attempt at drop, but no. Tempted drop from number four, Colin Whitfield. Would have given them a one-point lead, but sadly went astray. And none better than that small Salford number 13, Mac Tig. Looking for support, Graham West. Must be one of the biggest men in the game, six foot five. Oh, and here's a break and a good chance. He's got West outside him. West can he go for that line, he's got a long stride, he's got the reach. Well, referee Lindop's on the spot, but no, he's held up. Well, well, well. Graham West, we commented on his six foot five inches. He just couldn't quite make it, was held up on the line. And referee Fred Lindop waves, no try. Nash launching Kuhlman again. Not quite got the speed of his younger days. Number eight, Mike Kuhlman. Colin Whitfield. David Stevenson, a powerful runner. Barry Williams, well linked up this fullback. He's still going. Well, he got the man of the match against St. Helens in the, the second round, this Wigan fullback, and he's obviously not going to stay out in the cold. Nicky Kiss, Shaw. Julif going for that line. Next second row, this man Julif. Powerful lad when he gets near the line. Graham West. Oof. Well, I, I think Wiggins' John Pendlebury would have been advised to get that ball out. Campbell, Stevenson. Oh, and a beautiful pass. Yes, and he's over. Well, how well did David Stevenson come in there, took the ball on the burst, and that Wigan loose forward John Pendlebury backing up as a good loose forward should be, puts Wigan in the lead by three points to nil. Boy, it's Foy running the ball out for Wigan. Popping it short to Campbell. 
Campbell does well to get the ball away with Davy Stevenson coming inside. And there's a beautiful pass coming up from David Stevenson now. It lifts up, pops it down, following through, and it's a lovely try for Wigan. Interesting to think that the last time Salford beat Wigan in the John Player Cup, this was the boy who kicked the winning goals for Salford. But there's one for Wigan. And so that comparatively straightforward kick puts Wigan in the lead by five points to nil. Teammates last year, now opposites. <laughs> this man, Mac T, is number 30. Only a small lad. He's like a mole. He sort of ferrets and weaves his way through. And an offside decision against Colin Whitfield, the Wigan skipper, coming up too fast. Well, there's some debate on should I go for goal or should I not go for goal? Well, I think referee Lindop's going to have a word with my friend Alec Murphy. <laughs> I think Alec, you're safer in the box here with me than down there, lad. He, you could say he's a trifle excited, is Alec. Meanwhile, Bill Ashurst at the side of him just puffs on his cigarette. <laughs> and amidst all that consternation, Salford elect to go for goal. And with five minutes to half time, this could be a good two points to pick up from Salford's prop, Ron Smith. He's already got 50 goals to his credit this season and has certainly been in kicking form. And it's there. Well, a good kick from Ron Smith. Should put Salford back into good heart. And at five points to two, that reduces Wigan's deficit to something manageable for the second half. Salford just edging into that 25-yard area. George Nichols. Well, holding the ball up again, George Nichols, looking for support, but no forward running off him. And here's one who can run if he gets a gap. Ron Smith, Coleman driving for the line. Foul! Mac on it. And it's a penalty. Yes, a silly penalty, a needless penalty against Wigan for holding a Salford man, not allowing him to take part in the game. And this could edge Salford nearer. That Wigan bench look a little concerned now as Salford are clawing themselves back into the game. Alec Murphy says, what the hell's going on out there? And it's successful. That brings Salford back into this game. Five points to four now in Wigan's favour. Martin Foy, Graham West. Six tackle coming up. This is the sort of situation I, I would expect to kick. Well, an attempted drop, but no. Attempted drop from David Stevenson. I honestly think he would be better putting a high ball up on that line. These full backs this afternoon will have icy fingers. It could be fumbled anywhere. <laughs> Salford got a long way to go to get to that Wigan line, but they're opening it up. And it's Wigan ball. Eh? <laughs> well, it's a penalty to Wigan. Nicky Kiss stole the ball, and I think he took a punch, yes, off Stevie Nash. And this penalty kick could be crucial. Well, there's two men on the ball there as Nicky Kiss takes the ball, uh, steals the ball, I'm not too sure about that. Ta uh, running the ball takes a tackle from Dave Moran, and is Stevie Nash following in? Yeah, blindside, left arm. 
and he looks as though he's going to have a black eye in the morning. I think a pound and a half a stake on that tonight. Oh. I don't think he'd be too bothered if Wiggins, Colin Whitfield can put this goal over. Three minutes to go and this kick could in fact take Wigan onto the semi-finals and this John Player trophy would give them that crucial three-point lead. 30 yards in front of the posts. It's got the height but not the direction, just to the right of the post. And so Colin Whitfield fails to increase Wigan's lead. It's still only five points to four. Wigan still on the attack, as they have been most of this half. Graham West... Wigan are just content to hold this ball now. They're playing for time. Danny Campbell. And the sixth tackle coming up. 40 minutes gone in the second half. Wigan looking to be assured of this semi-final spot. And well tackled by Salford number seven, Stevie Nash. Well, Salford, second division, have certainly belied that lowly position this afternoon. They've tackled hard, they've ran hard, and they've given their best. Injury time now. Is this a last disturbing chance for Salford? No, there's the hooter. Well, despite Salford's gallant effort, that solitary try by John Pendlebury, Wiggins number 13, goal by captain Colin Whitfield, was just enough to take them to the first ever semi-final. Keith, an exciting game. I thought it was absolutely tremendous, and uh, one of the highlights of the game for me was the lack of... Uh a lack of nastiness in the game. I don't think there was many stoppages. It was an all-action game. And for, for the whole of the 80 minutes, both sides were in an excellent chance. All credit to Salford for their 